Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. This evening, Deborah Eckerling is training us on how to set and achieve our personal and professional goals. But first, let's get to know Deborah a little bit better. Deborah, I have three questions for you. Number one, uh, you're specializing in a rather unusual area, uh, goal setting. Why did you choose that as your unique area of expertise? Well, first of all, thank you. Thrilled to be here. Um, my background is in communications and project management, but I actually got set on this path many years ago when I was doing events for Barnes & Noble back when I still lived in the suburbs of Chicago. As one of my community members came in and said, Deb, will you start a writer support group? And I said, if you think people will come, I'd be happy to try it out. And not only was it a hit, it really showed the power of setting and achieving goals. And not only that, the community, and who knew that that would set me on the path that I'm on today. Wonderful. Uh, I'm sure as you have uh, taught people about effective goal setting, you have developed a, an, a, an awareness of the two or three things that really get in people's way of achieving their goals. Uh, if it's not stealing thunder from your presentation, would you share those things with us? Well, of course, it'll almost be like a sneak peek, but really what sets people, what really gets in people's way other than themselves, well, themselves, they overthink their goals, they underthink their goals, they don't really pay attention to what it is that they want. They're, they they set on a one course and they think that that's their course for their entire life. That's not the case. We have the power, but unless we know what we want, we cannot set goals to, to accomplish it. Uh, unless, we, uh, unless we know what we want, uh, you're talking about a higher order? A si yes. Uh, okay. You, you can't get what you want unless you know what you want. Uh and that really involves choosing yourself, taking the time to dive deep and figure out what that is. And maybe it's part of your life. Maybe you want to change your entire life. But unless you do that fundamental groundwork, you may be successful, but you might not be happy. So it really starts with you and making that choice. Okay. I'm certain we're going to be hearing more about this. I am certain also. <laughs> my, my last question is this. Uh, what is your favorite fun productivity hack? My favorite fun productivity or unproductivity? Your favorite fun productivity hack. Uh, the Instant Pot is my favorite fun productivity hack because what you do, and I'll probably talk more about this as well, is you can put in ingredients and then go about your merry way and get things done. And then when it's done cooking, you have food as a reward. So uh, it's something that as someone who didn't really love to cook, until a few years ago, it's extra meaningful for me because I discovered, wait, if things can get done while I'm doing other things, then it's really a substantial way to get, it's win-win. So put, put in, it doesn't have to be the Instant Pot, it could be the slow cooker, it could be the air fryer, but you can get things done in small periods of time while food is cooking. And it's, it's gold stars. It's a reward. It's a win for everybody. Lovely. Beautiful. Now, a uh, message for participants. Uh, it's not much fun for Deborah to look at uh, black empty boxes. So if you would please come on camera, I, I'm quite sure she would be very grateful. She'd really appreciate your energy. Number two, uh, please stay muted. And when you have questions, type them into the chat. I'll assemble them in little batches and pose them to Deborah during her talk at, at the right intervals. Uh, now, you're going to be sent a link to the recording of Deborah's talk in a few hours, but I nevertheless encourage you to take notes because the very act of taking notes is going to increase what you absorb by 30-ish uh, percent. Deborah, are you ready to knock our socks off? 
I really hope you all are wearing socks so I can knock them off. Yes. The podium and the lectern are all yours. Take it away. Wow us with your wisdom. Wow, no pressure there. Thanks again for having me and, and welcome. Um, as Roger said, I'm Deborah Eckerling and I love goals. That's probably apparent by now. And if it isn't, by the time I'm done talking, you, you're going to wonder, wow, is this possible to love goals this much? Yes, because you can't get what you want unless you know what you want. And that really starts with choosing yourself. And it's not just about those professional goals. It's about creating a wonderful, fun, well-rounded life that fulfills you, that makes you happy, that, that makes your family happy. So when you set personal as well as professional goals and set yourself up for success, then that really is the recipe for a happy life. And you're all entrepreneurs, so you know that you love doing whatever the thing that you do is, which is great, but that really is that springboard. Because as we, we previewed before, you can't get what you want unless you know what that is. And it's all really about finding Goaltopia. So yes, I made up this word when I was writing my book because a word didn't exist that meant achieving your goals and living the life you want. And that is what Goaltopia means. So what is your Goaltopia? When you think about the life you want, what does that look like? Are you a known expert? Are you building a successful business, elevating your career, achieving work-life balance? Yes, these are the four buckets that I managed to divide goals into for the purpose of my book. But that's really what it's all about. Do you want to build this business? Do you want to be known? Do you want to be like the go-to for everything at your company or at someone else's company? Or do you want balance? Likely you want two, three, maybe you want all four of these, which is fine. You can definitely have it all. You just need to figure out what all is, what that means to you. Again, I'm Deborah Eckerling. I created the Deb Method, which is what we're going to be talking about. It is my system of goal setting simplified. I am author of the award-winning Your Goal Guide, a roadmap for setting, planning, and achieving your goals. Uh, and I, <laughs> because I love so, goals so much, I host the Goal Chat Twitter chat. Gold Chat Live Show and the Deb Show podcast because people get their inspiration and motivation in different forms. So I decided to create as many different forms to get my message out there because the last two years, they've been challenging. A lot of people had terrible years. A lot of people had really great years. Most people had somewhere in between. But one thing that it has taught us is that any time is the perfect time, whether it's by choice or by circumstance, and we've had plenty of circumstance to reconfigure your life, make new plans and achieve these goals that you set. Uh, as I mentioned before, my background is project management and communication. I am a fan of dancing ever since I was a little girl. Uh, now I do dancing for exercise and wellness breaks. And I love cooking for productivity. And I had no idea that was gonna be a question. So that's pretty funny. Um, and I like to talk because this is whatever it is that you do that you love. And I'm sure Roger agrees with this as well. You need to talk. You need to get it out there because your special gifts, you need to give them away to make the world a better place, which really ties into the first phase of Deb, which we're going to start with. So I bet you're wondering, what is Deb? The DEB method, which is my system for goal setting simplified, stands for determine your mission, explore your options, brainstorm your path. And it is through these three phases that you can set the foundation for your goals and set yourself up for success. Determine your mission. When you think about the life you want, what does that look like? What is your goaltopia? Start close your eyes, and it can be now or it can be later if you're watching the replay, hit pause, and, and really think if everything was perfect, 
what is your ideal? Are you number one on the New York Times bestseller list? Is your company in Forbes, Forbes 500, uh, I'm sorry, the Fortune 500? Are you listed in a Forbes top 50 list? Are you living on a private island, running your business and having this happy balance? Whatever it is that you want, it starts with that visualization. And if you have trouble with that, that visual, use the alphabet. It's the simplest form. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you know the rest of the letters, but go through the alphabet and write down something from every letter that, that you want. And sure, there can be some overlap. You might write D for dog and P for puppy and L for, Labrador. So if you have all these things, I think a dog, a Labrador probably is in your future. But go through, allow your mind to wonder or do some meditation. In meditation, it can be cooking, it could be gardening, it could be walking, it could be exercise, or it could be traditional meditation. But allow your mind to wander. And if you're stuck, think about what did you love as a child? What is that skill? Did you have a paper route? Did you have a lemonade stand? Did you sell food door to door? I think that was one of my endeavors because I wanted a lemonade stand alternative. As entrepreneurs, you're disrupt you are disruptors by nature. So what are you disrupting and what is what you've created going to do for not just everybody else's life, but what do you want that to do? to give you the life you want. And beyond that visualization, if you can come up with something concrete, like let's say your product in stores, do a mock-up of your product in stores. Do a mock-up of your picture as the number one go-to for that in a newspaper, mock it up, print it out, and put it somewhere where you can see it. Because it's one thing to know what you want, but very much another to be able to visualize it, to have that concrete imagery hitting you in the face every day as you are working towards your goals because some things will happen really quickly, but more often than not, goals take time, especially when you're working towards this perfect life. It's not the perfect life. It is growing something and taking that journey. So to start with the visualization, that is the first step. After that, write your current bio. You probably already have one, but write it again. What does your bio say now that highlights the who you are that you really want to show your best self to the world? And after you've got your current bio, which by the way, it could be a couple lines, it could be a paragraph, it could be a page. This you're writing, yes, you should have a version for your website, but write a version for you. And if you're having trouble writing your current bio, the best advice I give on that one is do it after you've attended a networking event because you've been introducing yourself a lot and have the highlights of who you are at top of mind is really the best state of mind for writing your bio. And once you have that, then write your future bio. Now the key with the future bio is you want to write it in the first person, I'm sorry, in the third person, but in the present tense. So it's like a book jacket cover or an article about you. What do you want the you in your future to say? And again, we've had plenty of changes. Guess what? We're gonna continue to have plenty of changes. So when you think about your future, what do you want it to say at the end of this year or by your next birthday or at the end of next year? and then maybe write a version that's five years down the road. So even though the way that you think you want your future to be could change, for example, let's say two and a half years ago, you thought your big dream was to be speaking in sold out auditoriums. Now it's to be speaking in sold out Zoom rooms. So what makes sense for you, what do you need to do to adapt your future, your future bio? This is you living the life you want. What does that say about you? What do you want to claim to the world is the you that, that's coming soon, basically. 
And once you have your current bio and your future bio and this vision, now this is, the, first of all, it's the fun part. We all have worked somewhere where there was a mission for the company. Well, what is your mission? And you could think of it in terms of what is your personal mission? What am I all about? But also think about your professional mission. What is it about the who you are and your background? What's unique about you? What excites you? And what are you creating, whether it is to inform, educate, entertain, inspire, or maybe it is a product that helps. Whatever it is that you do, when you do it for someone else, when you have that mission of giving, giving behind it, it solidifies what you're doing and it's like rocket fuel for what you create. So for example, my mission is to use my background, my systems, my book, my workshops, my experience to help as many people as possible figure out what they want and how to get it so they can live a better life and positively impact others. So think, what is your recipe for success? Why do you do what you do? What makes you unique? And how does it help the world? And from there, so this mission is what guides everything. But from there, you want to write your motto. And your motto is a short three to five word, snappy, really exciting snippet that embodies what your mission is all about. So my motto is goal setting simplified because everything that I create in my goal world <laughs> has that behind it. Whether I'm writing an article or giving a presentation or my book, it all makes the instructions really easy because changing your life is challenging enough. So why, why make anything more confusing? So I am all about the simplified. So think about your mission and then shorten it into a motto. And if you're having trouble, go back to the brainstorming. We'll talk more about that when we get to the B, but write out 20 things that you think could be your motto and then go back over it. Maybe write another 10 or 15 more. Uh, I'm a big fan of brainstorming and it's great for problem solving and for creation. But the reason we want to do at least 20 items is the first five you know, the second five you kind of know. So by, you get, by the time you get to 15 through 20, you're really stretching your brain. So the more you can brainstorm, the more you can dig into these great ideas, the more unique, the more fun, the more excited you're go going to get. The more things you write out, the more you're going to be able to create, and then you can mix and match. Or you can use a song you like as your theme song. You can have this title, king of this, queen of that, emperor of whatever. But that is going to be your guidepost as you go through your goal journey, because we all know shiny object, shiny object syndrome way too well right? Oh, that looks fun. Oh, what a great opportunity. The thing that your motto enables you to do is to look at opportunities to see whether they are a fit for your personal journey. So for example, someone asks you to speak on a panel and it's interesting, but you're not quite sure. So first you say, is this in alignment with my motto? Yes then yes. If no, then you ask a second question. Will this benefit me in other ways? If yes, go for it. If no, say thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity, but it is not in alignment with what I'm doing right now. Perhaps we can work together in the future. Or if it's a volunteer opportunity, I'd love to help you out. I'm at crunch time right now, but why don't you get back in touch with me? in about three months and perhaps we can make something happen. So as things come your way, make sure they're in alignment with you. I remember this was a few years ago. Someone said, hey, Deb, will you speak on this panel? Well, it was a friend for me, a friend of mine. So I said yes. And then as it got closer and closer, I was dreading it because it was a topic I could speak on, 
but it wasn't something that I was super into. And wouldn't you know, the day of the event, it was canceled. I was so happy and relieved. I'm like, okay, the universe is telling me something. And then when she rescheduled it for January, I said, thank you so much, but it's goal season and I'm not available, but I appreciate the opportunity and perhaps we'll do something together in the future. And something on that date did come up that was more in alignment with what I was doing. And I was able to accept it because I passed on something that was not a good fit for me. One other thing to think of in terms of motto as your compass, when you say no to an opportunity that's not a fit for you, you're giving someone else an opportunity to say yes. So it may be a no or a not yet, but it might be a yes, please, and a how wonderful thank you for someone else. So, and this is determine your mission. Roger? And there are no questions. I'll keep on going unless you have questions. Yeah, off you go. Off I go. Explore your options. Now, this is the fun part. So it starts with embodying the life you want, what you enjoy, what you want to create, or who you want to be known for. But that's just the idea. That's the intention. That is the future. Now we need the plan. But even before the plan, it takes the time and the energy to figure out what that means for you. Now, my favorite, 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 favorite brainstorming exercise is called directed journaling, which is my take on journaling. And this is how it works. You want to schedule three, four, five, 15 minutes with yourself. So make the appointments, put them in the calendar. When the calendar notification comes on, you do the things. We'll talk more about calendars later. And during that time, you're answering a question or a series of questions that's very specific to what's next for you. What do I want? How do I want to showcase my expertise? Oh, I need to amp up the marketing for my business. What does that look like? What sort of things do I need to create? What sorts of campaigns? Oh, I don't know what to do about my day job. My entrepreneurship is my side hustle and I love it, but I don't know how much longer I can stay in this day job. What's next for me? So the idea is to ask yourself a very direct series of questions related to what's next for you. What are you creating? What is next for balance for my life? Maybe work is perfect, but you have no balance. Your direct to journaling questions would be, what are my personal goals? What do I love to do? What do I do when I'm not working? Do I ever not work? Oh, the other day I didn't work and I did this and it was fun for me. So allow your brain to go with the flow of what you're thinking. And there are two parts of journaling that are really important. A lot of people say you should only journal when you're writing by hand. And yes, there are studies that show there's that, that greater connection. When you put pen to paper, when you're taking notes, the information goes better into your brain. And however, if the only way that you're going to take notes is if you type your notes, then type your notes. So whatever way that you are going to journal, you should journal. If you are not a good typer, typist, then do voice notes and then get it transcribed through a tool like Otter. If you would rather doodle, but do the journaling the way in which you will do the journaling. So do these appointments three, four, five times, but don't read any of your notes until after you've completed that exercise, because what's gonna happen is when you read through it, you will find the common themes. You will think that you wanted to do a one thing, but you only mentioned it twice, whereas something you had no idea you loved kept coming up over and over in the, con in the conversation you're having with yourself within the journal. So for example, let's say you're a foodie and you have no idea what to do with it, but you thought 
you wanted to just become a foodie Instagrammer. You figured that's the best way to share your passion for food. But as you're doing the journaling, you're coming up with ideas right and left. Well, what if I start a podcast where I interview other people who have booty side hustles? I mean, there are plenty of those, right? The fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter whether it's your full-time gig or your side hustle, whatever your passion project is. I'm sure there are a lot of people who do similar things, but only you have your unique background and circumstances. So only you can put your spin on whatever it is that you want to create. So do the direct journaling, list the common themes, and then identify the options within it. So let's go back to the business builder. I need to start a new side hustle. I don't know what I want to do. And you come up with three ideas. Maybe one of them is you want to write a book. Okay, I'm going to start creating that as a line of income. Another is you want to create a new product that solves this problem, but you have no idea what that is. And maybe the third thing is you're going to start doing a series of workshops. You've got these three great ideas, but you don't know which works for you. Well, that's when you can research the possibilities. And this is why your network is so important, why it's so good to go to events like these and connect with the other people that you're, you're communicating with. So networking goals are always good because you only know the people you know. The people that you know, know other people. So as you're researching the possibilities, you can either put a post up on LinkedIn, oh, I wanna write a book, who knows how this works? Or, oh, I wanna start creating courses. Or I really wanna invent something. Are there any inventor groups where I can go and brainstorm with? So start by, you can either send notes to your connectors, people who know people, or look through your connections to find out who does the things that you're interested in exploring. So find that information. And yes, you can Google, you can watch videos. I'm sure there are plenty in this series that can give you information, but look at what you are most drawn to because whatever you're most drawn to, you're going to put in the time and the energy and what you're going to do. If you don't like being on camera, a video series is not a good fit for you. If you don't like to write, don't write a book, don't start a blog, but maybe a visual marketing effort is the right thing for you. So look at everything you need to do, whether you're looking for a marketing initiative or you're looking to start a new hobby or side hustle, or what do you want to do to make your personal life better? It's another thing. What do I want to do? Do I need a hobby? Do I need to get healthy? Do I need to work out more? Do I need more family time? What does this mean? So research the things that make sense for you. And I say make a choice, but it's really more like a series of choices. What are the things that you want to do? What are these goals that you want to set? What do you want to create? So look at those options and see what makes sense for you, or maybe do A list, B list, C list. Maybe start with one aspect and then go to the others, but explore, open your mind, see anything and everything that's possible. And then from there, you're going to be building that plan. So maybe it's, if you don't have a new website, you need to build, create your web presence, your brand. If you don't have, if you feel like you don't have a personal life, maybe your goal is to have a better personal life, to have more of that work-life balance. So think about what your priorities are and look at your life and see what makes sense and create an order of importance of what you want to achieve. Deborah, are you ready for our first question? I am so ready for our first question. A young gentleman who lives in Surrey, British Columbia, called Ashok, and Ashok asks, you said you don't read the notes. When should we read the notes? After oh. a day's journaling is done or only after a few days later? Read the notes after a few days later. So 
do the notes, I'd say three, four, five times over the course of a week, bless you. And then set aside some time to read through everything. And then that's where you're going to find the common themes. That's where you're going to see things jump out at you that you might not have even know that held your interest. There are no further questions, Deborah. Back to you. Okay, back to me. And I, before I move on, I want to say one other thing about directed journaling. It is literally the best tool for any kind of decision making or problem solving because you, you asked before what stops people from achieving their goals. They overthink, they overthink, they don't have a plan. The other thing is people try to figure things out in their head. And you can't mind map in your head. You can't like put a pen on your, well, that's, you, maybe you like to doodle on your face and draw notes. But really, when you can look at things, when you can see things objectively, then you can assess what makes sense for you. So don't figure things out in your brain, write them all down. And let's say you have two opportunities. Maybe you've got one of those big motto questions. Something comes your way and you don't know whether to take it. Do the directed journaling for a few days and see what comes up and then go back and read it. Should I take job A or job B? Allow your mind to wander and see the possibilities and then you can go back and with a clear view, see what makes sense and if it makes sense for you. So directed journaling, you can use it to figure out your mission. You can use it to figure out your Goaltopia. You can use it to figure out any solution you need. Uh, Deborah Shock is pushing you for specific timing. I think he means timing, the, the elapsed time between the time you actually write and go back and read what you've written. I would say, unless you're on a deadline, I would do one a day for, I say five of seven days. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um, that way you can skip a day if you're too busy and you can't do it one day. So over the course of a week, do this three, four, five times. And then, so start on a Sunday. And then on the following Sunday, set an appointment with yourself to read through your journal entries. And I would also recommend read through it once, just straight through, and then go back again and make notes or highlight or whatever the things that jump out at you. So Ashok has corrected my interpretation of his question. He's now saying, no, I mean writing time. Writing time. Ashok, maybe you'd maybe you'd come online and and ask. what what I want to know is what time of the day, according to you, is the good time to start journaling? What time of day is good for you? Are you a morning person? I get up at five o'clock, sleep at nine o'clock. Okay, can you get up at four forty-five and do it first thing in the morning before you start your day? Sure, that will work for you. Thank you. You're welcome. So it's really, it goes back to what I was talking about with journaling, the kind of journal that you use, the kind of journaling you will do is the kind of journaling you'll use. The time of day that you will write is the time you should write. And it's not the same for everyone. But if you're a morning person, that's perfect. Or if you take breaks at lunch, to take a little bit of time out of your lunch break to write, or if you get your best writing energy in the evening, stay up a little bit later. So good luck, 445, good for you. Dylan wants to know, uh, how do you suggest we keep an eye at my goals progress? Because I feel we are not proactive past this step and let it slide as time goes by and then it's another year, what's your best tip? Oh. Uh, can we get back to that? Because I am going to cover that. Shirley wants to know, what about people who you run into who don't set goals? Your goals, 
Oh, is it people I run into or people Shirley runs into? That's Shirley's question. Shirley, might you might want to unmute and explain your question. When you have clients you run into that don't make goals, people that you run into that you meet that don't make goals. Oh, they're not my client. <laughs> What actually do you mean? What about people? What do you mean? What about people? When I run into certain clients or certain colleagues, they say, well, I don't set goals. I'm not going to set a goal. Well, the, then you you smile and say, good for you. And I had, uh, this was a few years ago, a friend of mine said this was her goal philosophy. At the beginning of the year, she would write a list of the things she wanted. And then she would stick it in a drawer. And at the end of the year, she would read her list and see if anything happened. And I said, after I, you know, picked my mouth off, off the floor, I said, could you do me a favor and see what would happen? If, instead of putting your list in a drawer, you like put it in your office and you looked at it. She said, okay, I'll try it. She was more productive that year than she had ever been before. So. It, it's really goal setting. There, there are people who don't set goals. I run into them plenty and that's their choice. I believe that you get the most power. And again, when you figure out what you want, when you do that first step, everything springs from there. And if people aren't, if I run into people who aren't goal people, I say, oh, great. So now the next time I say, you, oh, I had this woman, she said, oh, I figure goals out in my head all the time. And I'm like, good for you. And now when I say you can't figure things out in your head, I'm sure there are people who can. I can now say, now I know there are some few people who could figure things out in their heads. I have a frame of reference. Most people need to write it out, take a look and be able to plan that way. No further okay. questions. Uh, well, I want to ask Shirley what she says to people who say they don't set goals. If she encounters them all the time. It, it, it's just like, okay, well, if you don't set goals, what are your plans? Well, how do you plan? How do you set out what you want to achieve? And uh, they says, well, I just take it day by day. I write it down day by day. That's Which it. again, personal choice are these are these non-goal people happy uh, for the most part well good for them there could be some improvement but for the most part i'd say 70 percent of the ones i do are well in that some people are fine with status quo some people are fine with the life they want i i talk about this in my book i talk about backseat drivers when, when you're planning your goals if you want, speak to a couple trusted people, but before you even speak to them, know what works for you. Because when you know, when you know, when you know yourself, when you know what you're working towards, what you're building, then you can have an objective conversation. But when you don't, other people's influence can really impact you. People can steer you in the wrong direction they can encourage you in the wrong direction or they can steer you away from what is good so when you know yourself then you could take that feedback and move forward so i'm always very careful when i share what i'm working on with who you know, i have my own inner circle i'm sure you all have people that you trust which is great just be careful that the things that you are doing are for you because you're going to be more successful when you have that behind it. Shane would like to know, can you please mention a few more creative approaches to directed journaling? Okay, what do you mean? Shane, can you unmute and explain your question? Um. <clears throat> I might have missed out some of what you were saying, but like, how do you literally approach that? Um, 
you know, you got a notepad, a journal, whatever you want to call it. Is there a way you start it off? Are you meditating before you do that? I mean, how do you approach it? Well, using, okay, thank you for the clarification. Using directed journaling in this process to figure out what's next for you. And if meditating beforehand works for you, great. If, if um, ready, run, go, <laughs> you could do that too. That's fine as well. Start with what do I want? What do I want, whether it's to build, to create, to share with the world, to be when I grow up? to do as a side hustle, to, um, to do for fun, what would make my life more fulfilling, whatever it is that you're focusing on. So again, with the, with the personal goals, which I think is just as important, if not more important than the professional goals is my life sucks. I, I just can't get motivated. What are some things that I can do to get more motivated at the beginning of the day? Maybe if I tried working out in the morning, wait, I don't want to work out. Well, what if I ate healthier? Okay. I can get up. So let your mind wander with the questions that are most important to you. The other thing is when you're doing the direct journaling, set a timer. So you're not looking at the clock while you're doing the work. So that way, when it goes off, if you're in a flow, you can keep going. And if you're not, you could say, okay, <laughs> I'm good. So that, that's another approach to it. And that way you're all in with whatever you're working on and you're not thinking about the time. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for the question. Evan wants to know, what if you cannot achieve continuously your goal, for example, weight loss or success in business? Wow. Sometimes, you need, first of all, you celebrate all of the wins. That's the first thing. So even a little win is still a win. And maybe your win is, I worked really hard I need a break. I need to refresh and then start over with the, what is the mission behind what I'm doing? Why am I doing this? And let's say, let's go back to the, the losing weight. If what you're doing isn't working for you, maybe try a new approach. Okay. I've been doing this three times a week. Well, what if I tried something different twice a week, or maybe I need to make little adjustments every day, but the real important thing is to look at the wins <laughs> that you get along the way and allow that to fuel you to move towards your goals. If you're having trouble in business, go start from scratch. Go back to the why am I doing this? And then explore your options of what you can create to be successful. The other thing is timing. We don't necessarily have control over the amount of time things take, but what we do have control over is keeping going. So even if it's an hour a week or a couple hours a week that you're working on something that gets you excited, that fuels you, that's going to leak over the rest of your life. So be sure you're doing the things that you love as well and see what you can do to take that energy over to the other parts of your life that maybe need it. And just keep moving forward because that will definitely help. Dylan asks, I feel the same. I get going after goal setting, then hit a roadblock. Then I'm back to square one. Is this right? What set out to do in the first place? This is exactly why I'm such a huge fan of the mission and the motto. Because what you create in order to turn your dream into reality is not necessarily as important as the reality you want to create. You know, the whole, the journey is as important as the destination. When you take the time to look at all, everything we're talking about, let's say your, your goal is to be a known expert in a certain field and you've written books, 
and you've done a blog post and it's not working for you, maybe it's time you try a different approach. Maybe you need to do a TED talk, start have a conversation with my friend Roger. Getting the the what you want to create out into the world is just part of it. Knowing the who you are and your gifts and what you can put energy behind, that is the secret. When you start with that foundation, you can build anything. But when you don't have that foundation, you can get lost. And that's really the huge challenge. So start with that and then find ways to track. Gosh, I'm like in part five of my thing. Um, find ways to track your wins along the way. Keep a list like with your journal of a win a day or three wins a day. So when you're, you're feeling like, oh my goodness, I'm not getting anywhere. You can look at those wins and let that motivate you to keep going. Is that helpful? I assume the answer is yes. Excellent. Um, I just looked at the time. I should probably go back to it, it hit the B in Deb. And I think uh, you want to move on because these questions just keep coming. So we want to make sure we cover your content. Okay. Let, well, I can go through B and give some strategies. And then if we'll have time for some more questions. Hey, okay. Sound good? You deal with the Bs. Okay. Brainstorm your path. And this is once you know what you want. And like I said, it can be many things. Brainstorm all of your goals. I'm talking professional goals, personal goals, long-term goals, short-term goals, anything that's in your head. I want dream goals. I want reach goals. And I want easy goals because I want you to be able to like do things that you can check off right away. So brainstorm all of your goals and then divide and conquer. So you want them in all the professional goals together, all the personal goals together, and also categorize them. So let's say you are building um, your brain trust, setting your expertise upon to the world, and you need a new website. So any goals that are part of that creation need to go into that bucket. So the Long-term goal is to become a known expert. One of your short-term goals is to create a website to showcase your knowledge. One benchmark is to do all the technical stuff, get the hosting, get the URL, figure out your templates. Another is to figure out your branding, your graphics, what you want to create, whether it's going to be video, audio, podcast, what have you. And then the third is creating the actual content. And then what tasks are involved in getting to each benchmark. So figuring out the different particulars gets you to each benchmark and each benchmark comes together to the short-term goal of creating the website. So you want to throw everything out and put them together. I want to create a course. What are all the things that are involved in creating a course? Those all get bunched together. I want to get a new job. Well, what are the different parts of that? The figuring out what kind of job you want, the figuring out um, what education that you need for any of these jobs, the research phase is part of it. Then there's the redoing your resume and your cover letter and all that materials, another part. And then the third part is actually doing the work, getting out there, meeting recruiters, scheduling different informational interviews to find out what you're going for. So you divide into the personal and the professional, and then you put it in order of what needs to get done first. Boom. Uh, lifestyle goals, the personal goals can be done as projects. Like let's say you want to build a tree house. You might, or you want to redo a room in your house. Well, what does that, that gets approached the same way you would approach a professional goal. So it's, oh, I need to figure out what it wants to, I need to set a budget and figure out what I can purchase. So that's in one bucket. I need to 
get the actual things, do the shopping or hire a decorator or whatever, get the materials, and then to actually do the work. Same thing, tasks lead to each benchmark, benchmarks together get you to achieve those goals. Lifestyle personal goals are a little bit different. These are more like the healthy living goals or the better social life goals or the more family time goals. And for that, you wanna go back to my friend B brainstorming. Let's say you want more family time and you have no idea what that means. Make a list of 20 activities or even better, get the family together and have everybody make a list and then set a time when you're going to be doing these activities together. Whether it's once a week, you have family dinner, once a week, you have a family outing. So list out all the things it could be and then schedule the time to do the things. Networking goals. Oh, I need, I need to meet more people. Now this is personal and professional. Make the list of all the different places you can virtually go to to meet people, get educated, mixers, coffee meetings, whatever. And then you schedule the time to do the things into your life for a healthier lifestyle. Write out the list of all the things you need to do. Okay, I need to cook more. Cooking more means shopping all at once. So the, that way it's find the healthy recipes, find the food, shop for the food, cook the food, batch it. So to write everything out and then do the things. And all, all goes back to setting yourself up for success. So whether they are personal goals or professional goals or both, post them everywhere. Make a list of your top five to 10 priorities and have them. I, when I talk, I always like face this way because this is where my lists live to the right of my computer. Uh, everything I tell you, I do. Uh, and it's all simple, logic-based tasks to keep you on track and moving forward. So you want to post your goals everywhere. The other thing you want to do is embrace to-do lists. So at the beginning of every week, what, whether it's end of the day Friday or Sunday or Monday, write down everything you need to do that week. And it can be in terms of personal goals. It can be your passion project goals. It can be goals for your business. Write everything out and then go into your calendar and schedule appointments for this goal work. And again, if it's personal goals, maybe it's once a week, it's an hour of me time. Maybe you want a new hobby, but you don't know what that is. So you have research time and then time exploring whatever it is. But Using to-do list and combining it with calendars, that's what's really gonna keep you moving forward. But the even more important ingredient in that is to look at your life before you schedule these meetings. Because if you're working a full-time job, you have a side hustle, but you've got another little project that you really wanna do, schedule an hour a week for that project or a half an hour, whatever time, you can commit to and actually do. I don't want you saying, I'm gonna work five hours a week on something, I'll do an hour a day and never have time and give up and go home. No, maybe it's 15 minutes a day, two or three days a week. If you can commit to and do 15 minutes a day, three days a week, four days a week, that's an hour a week that you were not previously committing the time. And I say schedule and or track the time so whether it's an hour appointment or for 15 minute appointments, put them in the calendar and just say goal time. And then afterwards, write what you did during that time. So it's tracking. It's what I was talking about with the wins before. Keeping track of the things that you're doing. So when you're frustrated because you're not getting where you want to go fast enough, you can look and say, oh, well, I already did these things. I'm getting there. You'll get there. You just have to keep moving, which brings me to my five of seven rule. A lot of goal setting experts will tell you that you have to work towards your goals every day or else, you know, don't break the chain. I disagree because 
you're busy. What happens if you say, I'm going to work 15 minutes a day. That's easy. Well, you can on Sunday. You're fine. I'll make it up. I'll do a half an hour on Monday. Then it's 45 minutes on Tuesday. If you didn't have 15 minutes on Sunday, you don't have an hour on Wednesday. If you have to skip the days, skip the days, but do the time you committed to yourself. So I don't care if it's 15 minutes a week, make that appointment. You can move the appointment. You just can't cancel it because that is your commitment to yourself. Also, you want to create rules and rewards. When I, let's say I don't love networking, which is by the way, the opposite of me, but your networking goal is to do three events a week. And if you do, once you hit nine events for the month, you can take the rest of the month off or every, you're writing a book. So every chapter you reward yourself with a little treat, every draft is a big treat. So figure out what rules and rewards are gonna motivate you to keep going. One more tidbit, cause I wanna make sure we have time for more questions is also be aware of your well-being. We've all been, well, I've been <laughs> work from home before we had to work from home, but whether you, your entrepreneurship is your only business or your side hustle or whatever, working all the time is great, except for when you burn out and you can't be good for anybody in any part of your life. So be sure to set boundaries, take some time off, set a cutoff time for the end of your day, set lunch time. Can't take a personal lunch time every day. Take personal lunch time a couple times a week because it will help re-energize you, refresh you. Um, schedule me time, put that in the calendar as well. Be social, go to events like this to meet more people, expand your network and make new connections. But the most important well-being tip is to have fun because if you're not having fun, it shows. When you're having fun, it really, really shows. So be sure that you're loving the things that you do because when you love it, that's really what's gonna get other people excited and propel you and your business, your life forward. Uh, Deborah, we've got about uh, nine minutes remaining. Okay, do we have more questions? Yes, we do. Excellent. I, I suggest you finish your content and then let's go into the remaining questions. Okay, well, I was just, I was going quickly through my content because I knew there were more questions. Um, do we want to do questions now and then I can tell people about my free gift now? Or do you want to do no, questions? Why don't, why don't you uh, uh, give people your free gift and then we'll go to the questions. That's perfect. Okay, so I think you're all amazing. And I so appreciate you choosing yourself to come today. And I have offered, my free gift is my mission and motto worksheet. So this worksheet will enable you to really think through your mission, shorten it into a motto, but it also has a place where you can put your short-term and your long-term personal and professional goals. And this will be your like your at a glance mission and motto, what I want for my life cheat sheet, which you can keep everywhere. Keep it on your desk, keep it in like your secret folder that only you look at and use it as a reminder for what you're working towards to keep you moving forward at all times. I've typed the uh, URL into the chat. Thank you. And if you want, I know this has been a lot of information. And if you would like some personalized attention, <laughs> you can schedule a one hour one-on-one -on -one dev session with me. And together we will determine your mission and motto, explore what that means for your future, brainstorm your path, but even more importantly, set you up for success. Figure out what you can create that you can fit into your life that will keep you moving forward in order to make 2022 the best year ever for you. So if you need some help figuring out your goal plan, please reach out. And every one hour session comes with a copy of my book, 
uh, your goal guide, a roadmap for setting, planning, and achieving your goals. And it can be an e-copy, the audiobook, the actual book. And if you mention EIN, I will throw in an extra copy that you can gift. Or maybe you want two copies for yourself. So uh, go to thedebmethod.com slash goals and you can, my calendar link is there and you can set up our time together so I can help you move forward and create the life that you want. That uh, link is typed uh, tapped is in the chat as well. Thank you so much. And regardless of whether we work together, I want to be friends. So please connect with me. Uh, you can email me info at the dev I'm at the dev method everywhere. And you can also reach out and connect on LinkedIn and say that this is where we met. I also have a Facebook group for people who are reading my book where they can ask questions and share their journey. Um, I'm all about community. Again, you can't reach your goals on your own. You need your peeps, which is why I just so enjoy doing events like this where I get to extend my network as well. So this is, I, I think we all deserve a good year. So say, I'm gonna have a good year. And setting yourself up for success is all about figuring out what that means to you, doing the things and moving forward to create that life that you want. And thank you so much for having me. Having you is a pleasure. Shall I fire some questions at you now? Yes, please. And now I can see everybody's shining faces. Okay, Richard asks, when writing your goals, is it best to prioritize them to what is most important to less exciting ones, then do the most important ones first. Mix it up. It, do, you, do you have something specific in mind? Always put some, what you wanna do is you wanna look at it in terms of, you've got your long-term goals, the life you're creating, and what short-term goals do you need to achieve to get there? And within the short-term goals, what benchmarks will you hit? But when you're talking action items, mix it up. Do some things that are gonna get, you know, have dessert first. Do some of the fun things, not just all of the things. Then we have Brian. What is a tip for communicating your goal so that other people believe in them too for extra support? Ooh, join my community on Facebook. <laughs> Um, it's Facebook group, it's facebook.com slash group slash write on online. And it's for writers, creatives, and entrepreneurs. And it is all about goal setting, accountability, and community. And every day there's a different thread where uh, Monday is networking goals, Tuesday is goal goals, Wednesday is blog share day, Thursday is cheat your horn Thursday, and then we have photo Friday. And every day is an opportunity to share what you're working on and also meet people who are working on other things and finding connections. Um, in terms of articulating your goals, that's for you. So whether you choose to share in detail what you're building, or you just wanna say, work three hours on building my business or create a new landing page or revamp my website, whether you wanna be specific or not in public, that's your choice. The point is to be real with yourself and create goals that are going to keep you motivated and building yourself up and moving your business forward. Thank you, Deb. Next question is from Ashok. And that question is, what according to you is more important, achieving the goal or the journey toward achieving the goal? Why can't we have both? <laughs> the, to have a good time and enjoy the journey in creating the life you want. There will always be goals, but if you're not enjoying that journey, you need to go back to step one. <laughs> Start with visualizing that, that life because everything leads back to that. That's why goals fail. People do not take that time and gift themselves the time to figure out what they want and what they want can change but the idea 
what you stand for, your morals, your mission, that probably is not going to change that much, but how you get there could. So take that time to center yourself. Debbie asks, is there a cost to the one hour session? Yes, a one hour session is 197. And you also get the Zoom recording of our session. So you can take notes or not, but you can watch it over and over again to get as much as you can out of it. Do I assume correctly that the 197 is American? Yes, 197 American. Thank you. Dylan. For the international connect correction. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, it every session, you get two books because you're here. Um, and my book, Your Goal Guide, the first half of the book goes to the dev method. And then the second half is strategies for success. So it will only enforce what, what we're working on as well. And again, you can gift it to a friend who is, needs to embrace change as well. Dylan asks, and this will have to be the last question. Uh, there are many goals that are more like an infinite goal. How do I stay on track and schedule these better? Do I start with smaller goals? What do you say? I say you have the answer. No, start with creating the visual of that life. You know, do you want to be written up in a magazine for being known as this? Do you want a, an international bestseller? Do you want your product everywhere? Figure out what that means and create that visual so you're looking at it. Then look at your life and see what is feasible for you to do. If it is an hour a week, great. And for you, what I would say is figure out a way to have at least one big win every month. So little wins every day or tiny wins every day, little wins every week, a big win every month to motivate you. Okay, not just for you, for everybody. So it's building up because that journey is long, but it's worth it if you love what you do. It's not a, it's, it's your purpose, right? Is that helpful? It will have to be because we have Excellent. to wrap, wrap you up now. Deborah, thank you so, so very much for talking about this really timely topic as we bear down on the end of the year, and it hasn't been a particularly wonderful year for most of us. Uh, it's really important to uh, be in the right frame of mind to create goals, do it right, be effective, be efficient. And we thank you hugely for all the tips, the guides, the tricks and the, that, that you've given us over the course of the last hour. Yeah, Thank I, you so much. Hugely.